today is gonna be a bright, sunshiny, happy day because we are finally making our own clay. So to make your own clay, you just need flour, salt, and water. And if you do want to color your clay, you can color it with um, food coloring. You can color it with liquid watercolor. I did not color my clay and I just decided to paint it afterwards. And I made the weirdest, funkiest creature. I decided to think of what will make me happy. Um, who am I as an artist? I started out this video, you'll see in a second, of thinking I was going to make a tile, like a self-realization uh, tile of who I am and what makes me smile, but eventually I got to this little guy. I don't know. It's adorable. I can't wait to spray it with liquid glaze and put it out in my garden. Um, I think it's so cute and so weird. Can't you just picture this in like a Salvation Army like donation bin and then being like weirdly obsessed with it? I don't know. That's just me. But um, if you want to learn how to make your own clay and then your own weird little guy focusing on coils, um, slab building, and just getting creative and smiling through the whole thing, uh, keep on watching to the next clip. The first thing we need for our sculpture is obviously we need some dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one half cup of flour, one fourth cup of salt, and one fourth cup of water. I just have bread flour right here that I'm going to put into this bowl. I'm going to first merge together all of my dry ingredients, which that's my flour, and my salt. And then lastly, my water. Now I'm gonna mix this all together and it's gonna form my dough. Once you have this pretty shaggy looking dough, you are going to knead it with your hands until it has the consistency of Play-Doh. A lot of like preschools and a lot of places where maybe people would put things in their mouths use this instead of Play-Doh because obviously it's completely edible. It's super safe for you and it dries just like Play-Doh would. The reason why it dries is because it has salt and water in it and when salt and water dries together it gets crystallized. So I'm just going to keep kneading my dough until it has that nice Play-Doh consistency. I have completely developed my dough. I have made sure that all my ingredients are completely incorporated. All my textures are completely the same. If I rip anything apart, there's aren't pockets of salt or pockets of water. So this is pretty nice and ready to go. All right, so now I'm going to clean up my area. Go wash out my bowl. And now what I've decided to make with my clay is an all about me tile like you saw from the beginning. So I'm just going to section out my dough. These are gonna be for all the things that I'm going to attach onto my clay. I keep calling it dough, it is technically clay. Just to make sure that I can actually transport it, I am gonna be making this on a piece of paper. Make sure it's a pretty tough piece of paper. You can use cardboard or a plate if you're at home. <laughs> I guess we're all at home right now, right? So I'm gonna just start by thinking of what shape do I want my tile to be? I think that I've decided that I want a round tile because I wanna be able to kind of build it up and make it a little bit more three-dimensional. Now we are making a relief sculpture, so that means it's gonna be flat on one side and then three-dimensional on the other. So let me just start making my shape. So I have a very basic circle right here. Now remember that I told you guys that your dough is made out of salt, water, and flour. So in order to attach your two pieces together that you're going to make, you do have to scratch and attach. Just like in ceramics, you just have to scratch at your dough a little bit. You have to use a little bit more of that water that you had. 
then you're going to wiggle it all together. What I think I've decided to do, I really like fabric arts. I love clay. So I think I'm going to merge these two together. I'm gonna use my extra clay and I'm going to make a braid to make it look almost like a woven fabric. And I'm gonna make this into my world famous sunflowers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scratch and attach woven petals onto my center. But again, this should be about you. It should be about what you love and it should be about what makes you happy. If you want this to be a basketball, you totally can. If you wanna make a square painting palette, you can. If you love video games, maybe you can make this into a controller or a mouse or a keyboard. So really think about who you are. Obviously, you're not me. We're all very different. So again, this clay can be made into a whole bunch of different things. If you are getting cracks in your clay, just like in ceramics, you can just add a little bit of water and it'll seal right up. Okay, so I'm going to start making my petals and attaching it all around my flower. So in order for me to manipulate this clay, I do have to have pretty wet hands or else it just kind of falls apart. Just like in, if you've ever played with Play-Doh or anything, making that clay snake, rubbing your hands back and forth. If you do it on the table, you get a little bit better of a coil. What I'm going to do with this coil, move it on the table. I'm making my ends a little bit longer because I think that some flower ends are pretty long. This is how you make a coil. I am adding water to the area that I want to attach my clay and making sure that there is a little bit some texture there and then I'm just gonna wiggle it on should stick now in order to make that braid I want to pass one coil over the center coil another coil over that part I'm doing it again I'm going to put one coil over the center I'm just going to continue making a whole bunch more petals. I might have to make even more dough. Remember, our dough is made out of just three ingredients. Alright, so I'm going to go and make my other petals. To make this little button nose out of clay, you wanna make three balls out of your clay. One ball will be a teeny tiny bit thicker. Then you just lay down the other two and squish them so they're a pancake. Then squish this little ball on top. Then you have a little sweet button nose made out of clay. Now I'm gonna make little eyes closed and then a teeny tiny little mouth. That's really gonna be stylized. None of this will be super realistic. It is salto after all. I can't really get in there with a bunch of realistic features. I could try, but this dough does seem to crack apart a little bit easier than um, regular stone clay. So I'm going to just make a teeny tiny little coil This is gonna be my eye, a smaller. And remember that I have pretty moistened hands. Oh, see, it's kind of rubbing apart because it's too dry. Here we go. Okay, so part of my eye will be super teeny and the other will be a little bit bigger. Remember, these eyes are closed. Here we go. Maybe I can go in with like a little um, toothpick or I have a little knife here, so I'm gonna just get in there. 
Alright, my one eye is done. I'm going to go do the other eye and then really teeny tiny little smile with two coils. I think I'm almost done. Um, I made a little leaf here. The way I did that is I made a little teardrop shape. Of course I made a little ball. To make that teardrop shape, you want to flatten and pull into a triangle with your fingers. And then just start flattening out with your thumbs. Until you get a big enough piece. I'm actually not going to be cutting off the chin of my little elf thingy. <laughs> My little um, self tile. I'm just going to put leaves right here, like a little bow tie. I really love gardening, so I feel like this is a really wonderful way to portray that I love plants, I love smiling, I like fantasy. I think it's just a good way to personify me. Almost like me if I were like a garden fairy or something. Who knows? I don't know, art takes us weird places, right? <laughs> All right, I think my leaf is done. And then with, you could use um, a toothpick, but I have this clay knife here. It's called a needle tool. I'm just carving in little textures. That's how you make leaves out of clay. Boop. Mm. Alright, remember to attach it, you do have to add water or else it won't fuse together. Then I'm just going to place my sweet little leaves right here. I think I'm going to add maybe a little something right here too. All right, I'll be right back. So I also really love and live right near the ocean. So a great thing about this clay is that you can press in other mediums. So I'm just gonna press in a little seashell that I can paint later. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna let this completely dry and then I'm gonna come back and paint it. While my sculpture is drying, what I want to do is I want to go over just some basic hand building skills that I think everyone needs in their life. So the first one is making something called a slab. I think I mentioned it for the first shape for my little elfin creature thing. But to make a slab, you first want to make a ball of clay. When you're making a ball, you want to put all your clay in one hand. And this is polymer clay, by the way, so it's a little bit easier to manipulate than that salt dough. You're gonna put it in one hand and you're going to rub in a circle with the other hand and then start rubbing in a circle with both hands. Alrighty, the more you do this, the more circular your clay will be because the way our hands are molded, they're perfectly crafted to put into a ball right here. That's because our ancestors wanted to use their hands to drink water, use their hands to scoop up things for them to eat. So our hands were molded that way. So now that I have a ball of clay, I am going to smush that ball of clay with my hand. I think that we've probably all done this once in our lives. Then you want to take something that is a cylinder, a cylinder that is the same shape all the way down, just like this marker. And then you are going to start rolling that cylinder in the middle of your clay. Change the direction. If you want to get really advanced, you want the entire surface to be all the same depth. All the same thickness. Boom! That's how you make a slab. Now, depending on how big your next few forms are going to be, you're going to have to move your hands in different ways. If I were making a ball of clay that is teeny tiny, I would just need two fingers. 
boom, little ball of clay. If I wanted to make something that's medium size, maybe I would just use a few fingers in my hand. Maybe you start using the sides of your hand, maybe the fingertips of your fingers. This is a great time to kind of connect with your body. Figure out what is the best strategy to make. Make a theory in your head. Maybe using just my fingertips will have a different result than using my palm. Boom, a ball of clay. And again, making that big ball of clay, you want to just use your palms. <laughs> Let's say you want to manipulate this into a different shape. Pinching is a great way to manipulate your clay. Tapping on a flat surface is a great way to manipulate your clay. Um, pinching with your fingertips makes a really cool texture. There's a whole bunch of different ways to manipulate clay. Let's talk about those coils that I made for those eyes. Again, you probably only need one finger for a tiny coil. I'm rubbing back and forth, back and forth. Rubbing the ends to the middle to the ends. So you make a teeny tiny, oh, it looks like a little inchworm. I'm gonna make it an inchworm. <laughs> there we go. Maybe you're gonna need more than one finger for a medium coil. <laughs> Remember, you're rubbing your fingers from end to end. You wanna move your fingers. If you only rub on one area, it's gonna start getting teeny tiny, okay? <laughs> um, this looks like it could be a rose. Maybe I'll make, oh, or a lollipop, yeah. Lollipop, boom, lollipop. There you go and trim, you get a lollipop. <laughs> um, and the interim gets some hair, perfect, excellent. If I'm making a really long coil, you want to first start in your hands, warm up your clay. It's always good to warm up your clay. Get those molecules running around that surface. Remember, you want to rub onto your coil from end to end. End to end. Notice that this part's moving, but this part isn't. Maybe now you're going to have to do two hands. Get that motion in there. If you're a little bit older, maybe think about the physics of your clay. What's happening to your clay? You're younger. Think about just simply why would putting force down onto clay make it get longer? Think about that motion. Hey, now I have a great big coil. Oh my gosh, this is a weird weird situation I have myself in. With coils, you can always start stacking it. That's called a coil pot. You can just keep stacking and stacking and stacking larger, larger, larger. But those are kind of the fundamentals of hand building with your clay. All right, let's now go check back in with my weird little elf guy. Maybe it's finally time to paint. It's been some time later and this guy is finally dry. You know when your dough and your clay is dry because it turns like this whitish color. Um, what I did is I allowed it to dry overnight and then I popped it into my oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit until I saw that it got nice and white. This might take a while depending on how thick your clay is and it might be really, really short if you have really thin pieces of clay. What I'm going to do now is honestly... I kind of like how this looks. It almost looks like it's made out of sand. And I realize that I think it looks like an elf because these looks like it's um, this ears or something. I don't know. All right, to me, it looks like an elf. Now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to keep these nice and white. I think that I'm going to keep maybe the petals white. 
but I'm just going to use a little bit of acrylic paint and I'm going to paint over some details. You do not have to do this step. If you're making, let's say, like a sand castle or something you want to stay white, do it. This is perfect. It doesn't really crack. It's really nice, durable clay that you can really press in your textures, but this is really cute. And all you gotta do is let it dry and then bake it for a bit. Let's talk about the journey that is this little thing. This little elf came from me trying to look into myself and think, one, what do I need to see right now? Two, who am I? And three, what is something that makes me happy? Smiles, sunflowers, and gardening with the ocean. If you can see right here, I have painted with the acrylic paint. Remember that acrylic paint turns into like a plastic coating, so this will turn into kind of a plasticky feeling. But I just took flour, salt, and water made it into this earthy creature that I actually really love. It's so cute and it actually makes me so happy. Um, remember that you have to bake it and let it dry before you can paint it and before you can manipulate it or touch it really. But this clay turned into something that made me really happy. And I'm so happy that I figured out this recipe from Cassie Stevens and I could make something that made me and hopefully all of you really smile. It's so creepy, isn't it? I do love how it came out. I think it's so funny. Like, this thing is the farthest thing from the art that I normally make. Really realistic, a really graphic design. It's just a cute little fairy thing. And I think it really portrays how I'm feeling right now and it's making me smile. So that's really all I wanted to get out of this homemade clay. Um, remember, you don't need fancy stuff to make art. You have stuff all around you to make your very own beautiful masterpiece that makes you smile. So if you have flour, salt, and a little bit of water, the world is your oyster. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys make out of clay and finally get your hands moving again and eventually figure out what makes you smile. I don't know, this thing is just adorable and I love it so much. Uh, again, share out, uh, maybe make somebody a gift, let me see what you make, and <sighs> he's just so cute. I, I just love it. Hi right, guys, have a wonderful day and I'll see you again for another video.